Hey y'all, it's Crafty Hope here and I am working on a fun mixed media Christmas garland. I am um, going to do several different techniques and I'm going to let y'all watch me do this first one while I kind of explain what I'm doing. I um, love these little 3D balls that are so easy to make and so I decided I wanted to do a mixed media version of it. I've got maybe two or three at least two other tutorials on things I do with these balls but I thought hey I'm gonna make a Christmas garland with it so and I just kind of want to play with a bunch of my materials now you absolutely do not have to do this how I'm doing it you don't have to jelly print and um, spray and what else did I do you'll see it in a little bit I'll explain all of that but I wanted to kind of play with some of my things so to start this I am using um, jelly prints now you could absolutely pull out some scrap paper you have and the color palette you want to use or some scrapbooking paper or um, I think it would be really fun to use like some old books like the night before Christmas or a Christmas Carol or something like that to kind of fit the theme but I really wanted to do a red and green um, theme because that's kind of a lot of my decorations my wrapping paper all of that all have this red and green theme and like I said I wanted to play with these materials so I'm absolutely going to do that now you see here I'm getting like my ghost prints from jelly printing onto some thinner paper and I'm doing that for another project you'll see that hopefully in in a couple days or so but I'm doing I'm jelly printing onto cardstock for my main texture so that's it's just plain white cardstock so that I have a good base for the the colors to show up on and also so I have some some fairly thick paper to use for the the next part of the project now as far as the jelly printing portion of this I am just getting some texture onto the jelly plate just using a variety of different texture tools and just red and green for the most part I do have oh one of them in here somehow the red and the green gets mixed and it becomes this muddled mucky icky mess that I absolutely hate um, and I don't think I used many of of those pages in my end result but I'll probably mention it when some of those come up so as you can see if you've been watching here I'm just going through putting down either some red or some green I'm doing a variety my favorite of the red and green palette is really a bright primary red and then kind of a limey church chartreusey green um, that's probably one of my favorite color combos for Christmas I don't know why um, I think if you've watched my my color inspiration video where I used the green um, I, I had a hard time with just regular green but like yellow greens I'm great with so that probably has something to do with it is just a personal preference so I am gonna switch here in just a minute I think you get the idea of what I'm doing oh yeah see that one came out way too dark um, I didn't like it but I'm gonna move on here you see I'm coming in with that limey green and gonna play with it for a bit so I'm gonna um, you'll get the idea you'll see some of the finished papers in a minute but I'm gonna show you other ways that I alter some of my papers so here I've wrapped a couple more pieces of that white cardstock and all of the red and well I don't know if it was all but several of the red and green sprays ink sprays that I have so I'm starting with my homemade alcohol ink spray and then that's a delusion spray and I think like cherry pie or cherry red or something I'll put I'll put what it is below um, I had a little problem with it not spraying so I just took the little tube out and I find that if you take the tube out and spray and you know push the the sprayer in it'll come out the back side <laughs> so I did that and then I've got a couple of Lindy's sprays here just a little sparkle I made sure I added those last because they do have that sparkle in it and I kind of wanted that on top so I did the red one and then I'm going to come in and do the same thing with the green one start with my alcohol ink spray and then the uh, dilutions again I don't know what color and it's clogged and so I'm going to do the same thing and go through all of these just to get the spray down 
and I'm gonna, I'll, and you'll get to see the, how these turned out in a little bit, but then I come in with my acrylic inks. So you can see I'm already covered with ink, so it doesn't really matter. I've got, that one's a Liquitex, and then this one's a Amsterdam acrylic ink, and I think that one's the primary red or magenta, I don't know. These don't turn out as well, so I'm going to alter them in some other way, but I put down the ink just on there and then just spritzed it with some water, and it didn't move as much as I wanted, and that probably has a lot to do with that just being plain old cardstock. So I'm going to do that with both the red and the green. Um, the green I decided to saturate beforehand, and I think the ink did move a little bit more with this, but not nearly as much. And you can see that the two colors I pick in the in the green are definitely more of that yellow green than the green green. So, so that is my third way I altered paper. But I'm going to alter some of these just a little bit more after I get them dry. All right. So here are my jelly printed texture papers and I am just going to come in with some distress inks and distress oxides and some hand carved stamps and I've sped this up quite a bit. I don't even know if I'm going to show you all of it because it's really kind of boring but what I decided to do was for each stamp I was going to use a particular color and just kind of go through. This is just to add, a, oh there's that really ugly one that I was talking about. <laughs> it did not turn out. It's just ugh, brown mud. It's not what I wanted. So um, as you can see, I've gone to a Distress Oxide in Lucky Clover, I think, and I'm just using the same stamp and the same color for each one of these and just adding a few marks on each of the pages. So I'm going to let you watch this for just, I think maybe I'll do one more of the stamps and then we'll get to the next way I alter these papers because this isn't all about altering the papers, it's about kind of having a finished product so yeah so there I've got I think it's candied apple and just kind of and I used the candy apple with this particular stamp because it almost looks like poinsettia leaves you see that I think it's kind of cool okay I'm gonna stop this one here and we'll go to what's next so here are the next pages I did, which were the ones I did with the spray inks and the acrylic inks. And I, oh my gosh, y'all, I just grabbed a ton of different, like, water, well, I think these are all water soluble except for the Posca paint pens, but just red and green, uh, different pens and pencils and markers, basically. And I, I really, really love how these turned out. I think maybe I should have done just this for maybe all of them. Um, I like the, the stamped ones, but this was so much fun that I took pretty much each one of the media that I picked of the, the pens, pencils, and markers and added a particular mark. So, um, like here I'm using, that's a um, colored pencil, and I'm just adding little dots. That is one of those red markup pencils, and I'm adding these tiny little red scribbles in it. Um, uh, did I use the Tombow? Yeah, that's a Tombow marker and just some dashes. And so I did some big scribbles and some lines and some, and y'all, I really love these little pieces. So I'm doing all red on the pages that had the green ink on it. Oh, I guess I did two different kinds of marks with that. And so I did red marks on the green pages and green marks on the red pages. And I'm smitten with it. Um, the Bosca paint pen here, I just added a bunch of little tiny dots, which when I get to one of these steps here later, you're going to see I really like. Um, I didn't really like the marks I did there. I think I was getting tired of trying to figure out marks. So here I'm kind of, again, doing the same thing. Um, you don't, since I did get a lot of the more, I have dark green in my pens and pencils and all of that, but I decided since I was trying to go with that more chartreuse yellow green color, that's all I picked out for my greens were those colors to put on the, the red pages. So, and um, you'll see I'm testing some of my colors off to the side just to see if I like them, if they're in the right colors that I want. So, and it's so many different things, y'all. I can't even tell you what all of them are. I think that's a marabou crayon. 
let's see, there's a Distress Crayon, there's some Sabella Woodies, um, oh, what are those things called? That is, that's a Gelato, there's a um, Mol Molotow marker there, uh, what else did I use? I don't know, y'all. I just had a really good time. I really like these big marks I made with the gelato there. They're big, fat um, dashes that are uh, so awesome. So, um, again, I'll let you see me start on the next one, I think. And then we'll go on to what the next thing is, which is going to be um, using a punch. And, oh, I can't wait to tell you more about that. But first, let's talk about these pages that I did with the acrylic ink that didn't turn out so well. What I decided to do with them was a, a completely separate technique. Well, I guess not completely separate. I stamped on these. But with them, I decided to use some Christmas stamps and stays on ink. So I, um, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember how many different Christmas stamps I used but I used enough that most of the page was covered <laughs> with several stamps. So I've got, and I did all like images. I didn't do any words or anything like that. So there's ornaments and holly and I think, did I use a tree? No, there's several stars, I think, and things like that. That, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to keep these as true as possible so that I would have some that had still just red or just green on them. So again, this is kind of a boring process. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. All right, before I start punching, I decided I needed to add a little bit more black to these pages since some of them I had added black. So I'm just using a black china marker on some of them to, to scribble. You can see I needed a little bit more contrast and I just did it to a couple of them. And now we're going to go to, um, I guess I'm showing you here, all of the pages I created, and then I'm going to mix them up a little bit because I don't like um, having the same type of pages. I do this with almost everything I do, y'all. I don't like having the same type of paper or pages one after another, so I uh, mix them up a little bit, shuffle them. And all I'm using is a circle punch. This is a one and a quarter punch from EK Tools, I believe. And I like to do them upside down so I can see what I'm punching out. And then I trim it down so I can get to the next section. Sometimes I'll go all the way around, but I could tell on this one some of the edges were kind of not as colorful. So um, I don't go all the way to the edges on all of them. And I'm going to do this over and over again for every single one of those pages. This is actually more circles than I need, but it gives me a big variety. And if you don't like circles, you can use other shapes. The big thing is they need to be symmetrical so that they can fold in half and connect to one another. So I think other shapes like a square or diamond or a star, uh, maybe even like a, a oval egg type shape. But again, it has to be symmetrical to work with this uh, 3D technique that we're going to do. So let's get to it. Now that I have all of my papers cut out into these beautiful multicolored circles, I'm going to take a bone folder and well first I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to take a bone folder and get that a nice good crease in it. And really um, I like this process because I can sit, even the punching them out, I can sit on the couch and do that and watch holiday movies or just have some family time by the Christmas tree. I don't have a tree this year but if I did it would be perfect. Um, and it's because it's just a monotonous, I say monotonous a lot, but it's because it's a rep repetitive process. It's something easy to do while you're paying attention to something else. So I have pulled out five of these. I'm actually going to use six in my uh, little circles here, but I'm putting glue on one side of each of these folded circles and then stacking another one on half, making sure that their edges are together. And like I said, I did five in this video, but I actually ended up using six. It ended up being more even that way in the end. So, and I'm going to leave one side open. So, got my stack there, and I'm going to put it off to the side, and I'm going to just keep going through this process. I'm going to show you here that you can fold it and make your little ball. But 
we're going to hold off on that and go on to something else. Oh, the other thing I'm going to do is once I get my little balls um, without folding them into a ball together, I'm taking a little bit of Distress Oxide and Black Soot and inking up the edges. Now this helps hide any of the white of your cardstock that's still showing. It doesn't do it completely, but it helps a little bit to give it that little bit of a, bit of a finished edge look to them to have those edges inked. And the final step to this, you see I still had some of my little circles left. Um, I may go make some more of these little balls, but I sat on the couch, like I said, and sat down with my husband and watched a show and folded and glued these together. And I've got all my, and inked them too. So I have got, now I've got a piece of yarn and my ruler and some more of my Uhu glue stick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue this I'm going to put glue on that open side one of those open sides and just put it in your yarn and put your yarn in there and close it around the yarn and then you're going to move down I did about four to four and a half inches for this if you want this to be exact make sure you know I mean you could do these right up against each other if you wanted leaving just a little bit of space to have it a little bit fuller um, the space between them isn't important except that you want to have it as even as possible so that it hangs pretty symmetrically. So I'm, yeah, just working my way down the yarn. I found that the best way to really get that glue on there was to put the glue on the like folded section, like that crease there, and then put it on my semicircle before I wrapped it around the yarn. So, and I'm just going to move down this yarn and again I took this see here's my ruler I'm saying okay that's about four four and a half inches and I'm going to there well no I'm not I still haven't done it yet but it took me a little bit to figure it out to yeah put it there on the crease and then fold it around it like that you can position it and it works out beautifully and so I'm just going to work down this and make my whole um Garland, I do hope you like this process. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to give you a look at the finished garland. Um, if you like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, y'all. All right, guys, keep on crafting on, and Merry Christmas!